Hi, I am Manav Palan. I am back with season two. This is the fourth episode of the prediction series, and here I have a question that I was given in my undergraduate in my second year at IIT Bombay, and uh, we were asked to solve this question. Uh, and uh, there's a very clever way to do this question without calculus. I posted this question in the community section, and some of you uh, were able to get the correct answer with or without calculus. In this episode, I'm going to show you the quick method without using calculus. So first, let's just read the question. Two particles move about each other in circular orbits under the influence of gravitational forces with a period tau. So they are moving about the center of mass. There is no external force, so the center of mass will be stationary. The motion is suddenly stopped at a given instant of time and then they are released and allowed to fall into each other. Uh, prove that they collide after a time so and so. So I have hidden this uh, value. I have asked you to calculate the time of collision. If you haven't solved this already from the community section, I would suggest you pause the video right now and give it a shot. And then you can take a look at the solution. So let's first calculate the time for the two particles to collide. I'm going to take the general case where I have small m and capital M as the two particles. And let's say the distance between them at any instant is r. Let's say the acceleration for both the particles are a1 and a2 respectively. So can I say a relative the acceleration of 1 with respect to 2 would be equal to a1 plus a2 and that will be equal to f by small m plus f by capital M where f is the mutual gravitational force between them and you should be able to see this is f by mu where mu is the reduced mass given by 1 by small m plus 1 by capital M so I am assuming you know this formula for reduced mass. Now if I just compare this uh, situation to the situation where one of the particles is fixed. So let's say capital M is fixed and I want to calculate the acceleration of uh, small m. So here small m ka acceleration will be given by the force gmm by r squared divided by small m. That will simply be gm by r squared. Now in the first situation the relative acceleration will determine how the distance between the two particles varies with time. In the second situation, the acceleration of the particle of mass small m, that will determine how the distance r will uh, vary with time. If I just compare the acceleration of uh, the particle in the second situation to the relative acceleration, which will be f by mu, so that will be gm by r squared into small m by mu. If I just compare these two, you should be able to see the uh, equivalence is that basically we have gm being replaced or rather being multiplied by the factor of small m by mu. And this is how you will go from one body system to two body system. Now let us take a look at how we can calculate the time to collide and first I am going to do this for the one body system and one particle is fixed and then I am going to use this equivalence. Uh, to switch from one body to two body. So let's say I have a small m particle which has been given a speed v and uh, I have capital M which is fixed. So assuming that the speed is less than escape speed the particle will uh, perform an elliptical motion. As I reduce the speed the ellipse will grow smaller and smaller. And eventually, as v tends to 0, the ellipse is going to flatten out into almost a straight line, into a pair of straight lines. Uh, you can see that as v tends to 0, the semi minor axis of the ellipse is going to also tend to 0. Now, I know the time period of an elliptical orbit can be written as 2 pi root a cube by gm. This is just uh, Kepler's third law. Now, here because uh, the semi minor axis is going to tend to 0, therefore I will have the distance between the two particles itself becomes the entire major axis. So small a will be equal to r by 2 and therefore my time period of orbit would be 2 pi root r cube by 8 g. But this is not the time that I want. I want the time to collide. So you can just imagine that as v becomes 0, only this blue portion you can say is the descent of small m that will be the time to collide and therefore I will have time to collide would simply be t by 2 
pi times r cube by 8 gm. Now this is the time when one particle is fixed. Now if both particles are moving, all I have to do is replace gm or rather multiply gm by this factor of m by mu. So let's do that on the next page. So we need to replace gm by, we need to multiply it by m by mu and because both the particles are of the same mass, mu will be equal to m by 2 according to the reduced mass formula. So we are basically replacing gm by 2g and therefore my actual time to collide uh, for the two particles to collide when they are both free to move will be pi root r cube. It was 8 gm in the denominator when one of the particles was fixed, now it will be 16 gm. So this is the time for the two particles to collide. Alright, now uh, let's get to the easy part of the question where they have asked us to express this time in terms of the time period of the circular orbit. Now that should be quite straightforward. I have uh, both the particles performing circular motion about their common center of mass. Uh, so the radius for each particle will be r by 2. So I'll write my force equation as gm squared by r squared should be equal to m omega squared times r by 2. And therefore omega will be equal to 2 gm by r cube and therefore my time period tau which is 2 pi by omega that will be equal to 2 pi times root r cube by 2 gm and therefore my time to collide will be equal to tau by 4 root 2 and this is what I had asked in the question. So hope you have understood how we were able to relate the two body collision to one body collision and then uh, use that equivalence to solve this problem. I posted this question in the community section and some of you did get the answer and some of you told me that you got the answer without using calculus. That is absolutely fantastic. I am very happy to see that. If you were able to do it using some other method, using uh, calculus or any other method, do let me know in the comment section. But as far as I know, this is the quickest way to do this. So you can see the powerful nature of using reduced mass in such problems. If you are not very comfortable with reduced mass and the center of mass frame of reference, do let me know in the comment section if you want me to post a detailed video on the applications of reduced mass to uh, various problems in various chapters. Uh, I can do that if uh, you guys want me to. So just let me know in the comment section. And uh, that's it for today. See you guys. Good night.